Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know that recently Adobe updated all of their applications, including Photoshop and Lightroom. I already did a video talking about the new features in Photoshop, and I did a new video talking about the new features in Lightroom Classic. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll have links to them in the description below this video. In this video, we're going to talk about what's new in Lightroom, or what many of us call the cloud version of Lightroom, or what some people call the desktop version of Lightroom. So let's just get into it. The first new feature is called Smart Albums. If you're familiar with Lightroom Classic, you know that Lightroom Classic has collections. Well, Lightroom doesn't have collections, but it has something exactly like collections called albums. And until now, they haven't had smart albums. Let me show you how to use them. You need to be in the cloud section on the left-hand tab. Uh, albums, for some reason, aren't in the local tab. So you have to be in the cloud section. Then go down to albums and click this little plus sign and go to create smart album. Now, if you're not familiar with smart collections in Lightroom Classic or smart albums for that matter, what they are are albums that are automatically managed, meaning you set up some criteria and images will be added to the album or removed from the album that meet or don't meet the criteria that you set up. Now let's give it a name. I'm just going to give it this clever name called My Album. All right, and then we're going to go down here and we're going to create our first rule. That's what I meant by when I said criteria. So we're going to go up to add a new one. We'll just go to camera. So we're going to add some specific images from a specific camera into this album. We'll go to select camera and I'll go to Nikon Z9. And you can see that's there. Now I could add another rule, maybe all Nikon Z9s that have, you know, five stars or have pick flags or were shot with a, at 24 millimeters or something like that. So you could see all the different rules you could set up. We're just going to keep this simple and we'll just use uh, Nikon Z9 images and we'll click create. And it will create my album and it will have, in this case, three images in it. Now, if I add any more images to my cloud that were taken with the Z9, they'll automatically get added to this album. And if I remove any images from the cloud that were taken by Z9, they'll automatically get removed from this album. That's how these smart albums or smart collections work. So very simple, added now to Lightroom. Now this next new feature is a welcome feature by many of us. It's called Edit In. That means you could use plugins with Lightroom. Unfortunately, it's super convoluted and it's not as streamlined as it is in Lightroom Classic. Now let's find an image that I want to use uh, a plugin for. So I'm going to go to my local tab. And I think one of my pet, well, let's go to Fredo. Uh, yeah, this, maybe this image right here. If I zoom in, you'll notice there's quite a bit of noise here. So let's just say I want to use Topaz Labs Photo AI to sharpen the image and to get rid of that noise. So to do it, you need to go up to File, down to Edit In. Why didn't they put Edit In under the Edit menu? I don't know, but it's under File. So we'll go to Edit In. You can see I already have some here. I already tried this out in Photo AI. I tried it out in Aperty, and for some reason that defies all logic, I tried it in Adobe Photoshop 2025, which I didn't have to do that because for years, that was the only, quote, plugin we could use in Lightroom. It was available on the menu right here. So I don't know why I added it, added it there, and I haven't figured out how to get it out of here because once you do it once, it'll be here. Now, I am going to use Photo AI for this image, but I just want to show you how to get to that point. So when you first open up Edit In, nothing will be here. What you need to do is click on Browse. And when you do, in my case, because I have a Mac, it will open up a Finder window. If you have a PC, it'll open up a File Explorer window. But it will open that window up to where your applications are. So just find the app you want to use. Or let's say you want to use Gigapixel. Just click on it and click Open. And it will open the image up, in this case, into Gigapixel. And then that gigapixel will always be on this little menu here, this edit in menu. So I mentioned we're going to use Photo AI. So we're going to do that. We're going to click here on Photo AI. And what will happen is a little box will come up and it's going to give us instructions. Number one, make edits. Edit your photo in Topaz Photo AI while keeping Lightroom open in the background. This lets you easily transfer your edits. So it's important. Leave Lightroom open. Do not close it. Save changes. To transfer your work back to Lightroom, 
Just save your changes to Topaz Photo AI. All right, that sounds logical, but if you're familiar with Lightroom Classic, uh, when you use a plugin in Lightroom Classic, say Photo AI, you just have to close Photo AI or click Done, and then the image will automatically show up in Lightroom Classic. It doesn't work that way here, and I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Then number three, return to Lightroom. Finish the editing process in Lightroom. So this little box will pop up. You do have the option to not show it again. Just click on Open Topaz Photo AI. Then this box will pop up. It, you may have noticed it had a little button on the lower right that said Finish. Do not click that little button. Leave that box open like I did, all right? So we're going to, I mentioned, just remove noise here. So I'm going to click on Denoise down here, and we're going to sharpen it. So we'll let it do its thing. Uh, you can see there's a progress bar in the lower left-hand corner. Now, this isn't a tutorial on how to use Topaz Labs Photo AI. I'm just going to let it run its course and keep the default settings. And then I'm going to show you how to finish up in Photo AI and get this image back into Lightroom. Uh, so, it's done. Okay, you can see it removed the noise. Hopefully, it sharpened it too. Now, what you need to do is go over here like you normally would in Photo AI and click on Export Image. And when you do, you'll get this. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Uh, from Even though this was an Icon RAW file, .nef file, uh, when it went into Photo AI, it went in as a TIFF. That's the way it works. Then what you need to do is do not change the file name. So do not give it a prefix or a suffix. Uh, do not um, add up any applied filters to the file name. So don't do that at all. Allow overwriting. Now this might be scary, but if you send a RAW file, a manufacturer RAW file, you're sending back a TIFF. So the only way it would get overwritten is if you sent a TIFF to begin with, meaning your image to begin with was a TIFF, which it probably wasn't. It probably was either a JPEG or a manufacturer RAW file. So you don't have to worry about that. So just allow overwriting. You should be okay. Make sure you save it to the original folder. Then this drop down here, just preserve input format. All right. That's what it needs to be or it won't work because I tried it. Trust me. All right. So preserve image format and we're going to click save. Then what it will do is it will actually save this image in that folder. And you have to wait for it to process just like always with um, Photo AI. And what does that? I'm going to grab a swig of coffee, excuse me. And once this is done, hopefully soon, uh, we're going to then have to manually close down Photo AI. Again, if you're familiar with Lightroom Classic, you know when you click like you're finished, it will automatically close down the plugin for you. And will automatically then uh, be, you'll be in Lightroom Classic and that image will appear in Lightroom Classic automatically. Unfortunately, that doesn't work that way here. And this is a really large file. You can see it's why it's taken so long. Okay, it's finally done. We're going to click Close Window. Then we have to manually close Photo AI. And then we're back in Lightroom. And then I mentioned not to close this window down because at this point, is you got to be sure your photo is saved. Yeah, it saved it. All right, but it's not down here yet. So you got to click finish. And when you click finish, hopefully it will say it will find it. And when it finds it, it will add it down here. Now it hasn't there it is. It's finally right here. It's the TIFF file you can see right here. So there it is. There is the original Nikon RAW file. And there is the TIFF file. And you can see there is a difference if I go up here. So you can see the noise is reduced up there on that TIFF file. And here's the original Nikon RAW file. See there's noise. Whether or not it's sharper or not, I don't know. And it looks about the same as far as sharpness is concerned. But that's how you have to do it. Now, if for some reason when you click finish and it can't find it, it like you accidentally saved it to the wrong folder or you change the file name, what will happen is another window will pop up and it will have a browse button on it. You could click on that browse button and then try to find it manually. And once you find it manually, then it will add it uh, to, uh, to, the, to your Lightroom. So it's a little clunky the way they implemented this. Hopefully they streamline it someday so it works more like Lightroom Classic does when you're using a plugin in Lightroom Classic. So that's that. Now the rest of the features are kind of minor, but um, let's go over them nonetheless. Let's just find some images that maybe I want to look at. Uh, we're still in our album here. Here, this is a silly little image. Let's go to that. 
All right, uh, presets. They've done something with presets. So let's go up to the presets tab and let's go to yours, let's say. And um, what they've done, if I open up, let's say, beaches, we now have thumbnail previews. In the past, there was just a list. So now there's thumbnail previews. And of course, if I hover over any of the presets, you can get kind of a preview of that preset. You could always do that with the list, but now we have thumbnails. If for some reason you don't like the thumbnails, go up to these three dots and you could go back to the list view. Also uh, here in the presets, you have the option to do single group mode. And that's kind of like solo mode. So if you have a bunch of these are the presets I sell, by the way. So if you have like a bunch of these open, like, you know, all right, so there's, whoops, I came off my image of my lady, but that's okay. So, uh, so if you have a bunch of these open, uh, what you can do is go up here and you could go to single group mode and it will only allow one to be open at a time. So if you have beaches open, then come down and open black and white, it'll automatically close beaches. I like that. Uh, I think it works great, especially if you have a lot of presets or if you're working on, let's say, a smaller screen laptop or something like that, and you don't have a lot of real estate here. So it's a lot easier that way than to keep scrolling through your presets. So that is uh, another feature uh, here. Also, if you are in grid view, let's go to grid view. Uh, what you can do is you could uh, select a number of images. You could just click on one, hold the command or control key on and click on others. Or if you want to just select a bunch in a row, hold the shift key and then you'll select all of them from the beginning to the place you click, then you could then apply a preset in a batch mode, meaning I could just open the preset. Now, it's not going to give you a preview. It's not even going to give you the big um, thumbnail view. It's just going to give you the list view, but you'll be able then to apply, I'm not going to do it, but you could apply a preset to all of these at the same time. Of course, if you are on a single image and you're in um, loop view, uh, tap the E key to be in loop view and you have the preset, then it gives you the big thumbnail. Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? That's pretty much everything in in Lightroom that is unique to Lightroom, meaning and it wasn't added to Lightroom Classic as well. Uh, I'm just going to mention briefly a couple other things. Um, like Lightroom Classic, They've taken the generative remove tool, the generative AI remove tool, and they brought it to real time, meaning it's no longer early access. Now, I'm not going to go over how to use it. I did that in my Lightroom Classic video. Again, I'll have that linked in the description below this video. But um, it basically works the same way it worked like, you know, last month. It's just now uh, supposedly refined. It works better and it's no longer. Uh, given the label early access. Now, the next new feature is in Lightroom Classic as well, and I did go over it in detail in that video. And again, I'll have it linked below. Uh, it's called Content Credentials. This still is in early access, but it's accessed a bit differently in Lightroom compared to Lightroom Classic. Uh, for example, uh, let's close that down. For example, uh, let's say um, I want to export this image with content credentials. You need to set it up in Lightroom settings. If you have a Mac, preferences, I should say, Lightroom preferences is under the Light, Adobe Lightroom menu. If you have a PC, it's under the edit menu. So go to preferences, then go to export. Then right here are the content credentials options. These are the same exact options that are in Lightroom's classics export dialog, but they're here. So what you need to do is choose uh, whether you want to publish it to the cloud only, to the file only, or to the cloud and to the file. Uh, right, check that you want your name added. Uh, you want your connected accounts included. In this case, I connected Twitter and Behance. If you want to change your name, for some reason, has your name wrong, click on Manage. If you want to change or add any connected accounts, click Manage. You'll be able to do that. Again, I covered this in that other video and you want to include your edits and activity. And then when using an export shortcut, because there are shortcuts in the export dialog in Lightroom, uh, you could just click this and it will automatically apply the content credentials when you export 
uh, using a shortcut. So click done. If you check these as you want, I checked all of them. Then when you do export an image and you go to the export dialog box here, if you use one of the export presets, it will automatically get included because I checked that box. If I go to custom settings, right, and it brings up this custom dialog, um, you could see that there's um, nothing here until at the bottom it says content credentials. You do still have to check it to apply the content credentials as you set up in preferences. So it is implemented slightly different in Lightroom compared to Lightroom Classic, but it does the exact same thing. And if you watch that video, in that video I showed how you could check an image to see if it has content credentials. I explained why you may want to have content credentials on an image and how to find an image that had content credentials stripped off it and stuff like that. So all that's covered in that other video. I'm not going to go over it in this video because it's kind of boring. And I'm not sure how many people are going to be using content credentials. But again, it's still in early access. This probably will change when it is finally released. It will mod be modified somewhat. And when it does, I will do a video on it. Go over it then. So that's it. That's everything that's new and exciting in Lightroom. This was version 8 of Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.